Hi, I'm Irving, and I'm an Adamaniac. As we saw last time, the city is holding a luncheon celebrating Commissioner Gordon's 25 years of service. Hold on, I saw Dick was drinking milk out of a champagne glass, but what is Bruce drinking? Based on the color and transparency, I'm going to say apple juice. Mayor Lynn Seed and his wife aren't there yet, which is odd because the mayor is supposed to make a special presentation to Gordon. Wait, there he is. They seem to be arguing about something. More precisely, it looks like he's losing an argument. He takes his position at the podium and presents Commissioner Gordon with the requisite gold watch for his years of service. And now, due to circumstances beyond my control, I mean, that is, um, due to overwhelming considerations, I hereby discharge Commissioner Gordon. As the new police commissioner, he appoints Miss Nora Clavicle. Famous Nora Clavicle. I didn't realize her crusade for women had gone this far. I'd say she's won the crusade. Settle in, brace yourself, and buckle up, because this is going to be a bumpy ride. The successes of the civil rights movement in the early 60s emboldened the women's movement to start making more noise and try to make some gains themselves. Men responded the same way white people responded to the civil rights movement. They went bonkers. If women were in charge, they'd ruin everything. How, you ask? You're about to get a taste of the world these guys envisioned with women at the helm. Her first official act is to fire Chief O'Hara. Maybe this does have possibilities. Who's the new chief? Mrs. Linseed. Those possibilities are fading fast. I don't care if she's a man, woman, or other. Does she know anything about police work? Is she qualified for the job? Does she have the training and knowledge? I think we all know the answer. I have no other choice, Mr. Wayne. My wife is such a devoted follower of Miss Clavicle's crusade for women that she refused to cook or clean or wash my shirts until I appointed Miss Clavicle commissioner of police. Look, I've worn this shirt for a week. I haven't had a decent meal in months. You mean you might have to do those things for yourself? The horror! What kind of monster is she? Men aren't capable of doing those things. Everybody knows that. That's why God invented women. Suck it up, you privileged pig. Was he ever a bachelor? Or did he have an arranged marriage at 17 and go straight from a mother's pampering to a wife's pampering? Your voice won't raise an octave if you cook your own food. Your dinghy will not fall off if you iron your own shirt. Even when you inevitably burn a hole in one because you went for a beer instead of watching the iron. It's all right, Mayor Linseed, we understand. Not all of us. Maybe those of us who have butlers to do most of the wife stuff understand, but the rest of us... Commissioner, can you ever forgive me? Of course, Mayor Linseed, I, I understand how difficult it was. Why, I haven't worn a clean shirt since whatever happened to Barbara's mother ten years or so ago. She used to bathe me, too. It's her, sir. Yes, Miss Clavicle. Commissioner Clavicle, bad man, calling to tell you you can take an extended vacation. We girls are handling things now, and we won't need any help from you men, bat or otherwise. To finalize the separation, she cuts the cord to the bat phone. There's something curious about this affair. Very curious indeed, sir. Well, we're dressed for investigating. Let's investigate. There's nothing to investigate yet, Robin. However... We could take a ride around Gotham City, just in case. Well, good luck, sir. We men are counting on you, you know. To do what? Not you too, Alfred. Batgirl had the same idea and is also heading out on patrol. Are we men counting on her too? Now I'm confused. Nora, what you're doing is wonderful. Half the credit is yours, Millie dear. You reorganized the police department. It was nothing, really. Nothing? To fire every man on the police force and replaced them all with women. 
That was quite a job. She goes off to do police chief stuff. Task number one, find out what that is. Now that she's out of the way, you girls may proceed with Operation Ransack, while I proceed with Operation Disaster Insurance. There are only three obstacles, Batman, Robin, and Batgirl. Nora says, we'll have to lure them into a trap. She sends her two henchwomen there, Evelina and Angelina, to rob the Gotham National Bank. That should draw out the Bat Trio. I think we can all guess how useful that officer on guard is going to be, but let's get it over with. Officer! Oh! Now look what you made me do! But, but, but there, there's a robbery! It's all smeared. It's no better outside. Add a little paprika and simmer over a low flame for 15 minutes. Don't forget the bay leaves. And a peppercorn or two. Thank you! Thank you! Thank you? When my bank's just been, been burgled? I hadn't thought of bay leaves. Of course they're holding rolling pins. The rolling pin is a woman's weapon of choice. Everybody knows that. Officer! Chase them! They've just robbed my, my bank! How can I chase them when they have the car? And all I have are my new Givenchy shoes, and I'm certainly not going to wreck them. He finally calls it in himself on a police box. Calling all cars! Girls, listen. Our Bex has just marked all their dresses down 20%. I've been cruising around myself, Batman, and everything seems to be normal so far. Don't forget the shoe sale at Dubar's, girls. Wonderful bargains. Oh, by the way, Gotham National Bank has just been robbed. The three of them race over to the bank. Two girl bank robbers just robbed my bank while the police women did nothing. And then they took off into thin air in a getaway car. Sometimes you can see a great deal in thin air, sir. You mean back to the bat computer in the bat cave, Batman? There's no time for that, Robin. We'll use the portable bat computer in the Batmobile. I think I'll tag along, Batman. The instruments in the Batgirl cycle aren't quite as sophisticated as those in the Batmobile. Thank you. Thank you for noticing that I have a sophisticated instrument. The computer leads them to Drop Stitch and Company, maker of fine knitting needles. Because a room full of sharp objects isn't ominous at all. Don't make a move, Batgirl. Nor you either, dynamic duo. Holy knit one, Pearl two. Batgirl doing what she does best. What's this week's peril? You are wise to stay motionless, or you will be the terminated trio. The slightest move by any one of you will only draw the human knot tighter. Crush your bones. <laughs> You. <laughs> she calls it a Siamese human knot, though what's supposed to be Siamese about it we never find out. Any movement will do all that stuff she said. It doesn't seem to include talking because Batman engages Nora in conversation to find out a real plan. As soon as night falls, I'm planning to destroy all of Gotham City. They want to know why. I want to know how. I've insured Gotham City for $10 million, and what do you think it cost me? Two hundred dollars, perhaps. Two hundred dollars for a ten million dollar policy? Yes, Batgirl, because the risk is so low. The chances of destroying an entire city are infinitesimal. Don't you need to own the thing before you can insure it? Not in Gotham City, apparently. So I can insure your foot, then drop a bowling ball on it and collect a big payout. It's time for Nora and company to leave so the Bat Trio can get out of this. Do we dare breathe, Batman? I assume you have been all this time because you're not dead. And I regret to say, I'm about to get the answer to my previous question. Are they all set to go off one half hour after sunset? Yes, boss. How oh, good. That will give them time to distribute themselves throughout the city. And when they explode, there won't be a building left standing in Gotham City. A horde of exploding, wind-up mechanical mice. How did I not see that coming? We get a short montage of the mice running all over the city, and that takes us to the special unemployment line for ex-policemen. I loathe standing in lines, Chief O'Hara. Well, at least it's only one day a week, Commissioner. Besides, uh, what else can we do? Get other jobs. But we've been policemen almost all of our lives. We don't know how to do anything else. We didn't even know how to do those jobs, and we did them for 25 years. 
Back at the human knot, I'm not going to call it a Siamese human knot because there is no Siam anymore, it just so happens that Batman knows how to get out of one of these. If I can wiggle my ears, and if you are able to bend the fourth finger on your left hand just a fraction of an inch, you might strangle us all. He says it's the basic formula for escaping this type of knot. I'm beginning to wiggle my ears under my cow. It is my intention to capture every single expression in that sequence and make them part of the new logo we're designing. What's inside it? A high explosive charge and a timing device. It's pretty clear there's a legion of them all over the city. Robin, call Chief O'Hare, Chief Linseed on the police channel. Tell her to mobilize her entire force and send them out to gather up these mice. I think we've already seen how effective that's going to be. We know about the mice. <laughs> I'm afraid my police force won't be very much help to you. Officer, are those mice still down there? Yes, Chief Lindsay. That's that same cop from the bank. She and the chief both faint, which of course means her whole face is now smeared onto the back of that chair she was standing on. These are mechanical mice. They're not real. The stereotype picture of the woman standing on a chair terrified of a mouse is a real mouse. Those have claws and teeth and diseases. The worst thing these can do is run down and you have to wind them up again. And explode, of course. The police women aren't going to be any help with mice. But never fear, Batman has the answer. Flutes? What are you doing, Batman? This is no time for games. Robin, look! How'd you do it, Batman? There's no time to explain, Robin. I want you both to play exactly the same tune that you just heard. They'll divide the city into three parts and meet at the docks by the water. But... Just play, Robin. Play for all you're worth. Be sure you all play exactly the same notes Batman did. That's what he said, and he sure sounded serious about it. You must play that precise sequence of notes or it won't work. Don't deviate from that tune Batman taught you. It's the exact note and rhythm combination that's making them follow you. It's a good thing all three of them picked up that tune so quickly and precisely, and they all played it exactly like Batman showed them. Really, it's a nice little piece in its own right. I've been trying to find out what it is and who wrote it without success. You know how I could find out? Post a video with a whole thing and wait for the copyright bots to poop their pants. That would get me an answer. And there's always one. The mouse exploded, blinding Batman forever. He retired, took some new training, and got a fresh cow, and emerged a couple of years later, calling himself Daring Dude. Some guy in New York sued him. Dude, try this.
So how did Batman turn them into the Pied Pipers of Gotham City, as Batgirl puts it? I was able to determine that the guidance systems in the mice was built around the principle of high-frequency radar. So by selecting the right combination of flute toots, I was able to cause those mice and their homing mechanisms to zero in on the source of the sounds, the flutes. The frequencies he's talking about are radio frequencies. They're not audible and a dime store flute can't produce them. But before somebody can point that out, they're interrupted. I see you have some interesting freight there. That we do, Batman. Uh, caught him at the edge of town, just as you said we might when you phoned me. They were exceeding the speed limit by a considerable margin, sir. So we, we thought it best to take them into custody. This was one of the almost no episodes without a bat fight. The reason is obvious, Batman would never hit a woman. The only problem was, with all the exploding mice at the bottom of the harbor, there was no evidence to prove that Nora Clavicle actually tried to destroy the city, so the city attorney had to drop the charges. She sued successfully and resumed her job as police commissioner and had Batman arrested. She placed him in the custody of millionaire Bruce Wayne, who could never explain how Batman managed to escape or where he might have gone. I like how nobody questions why Alfred is there. They've learned one of the most important lessons about living in Adamania land. Just go with it. Do you think we'll have a breather now, Commissioner? Oh, unless we get some disturbing phone call, Chief O'Hara. <laughs> Commissioner Gordon. <laughs> Penguin. <laughs> Just let me ask you one thing, Commissioner. Did you ever hear of the lethal Ligerian fruit fly? Like the idea that there's a place called Nigeria. Just go with it. We are seeing a genuine phenomenon in action here. Women were starting to stand up and call for the same rights as men, the same pay for the same job, basically what's in the Equal Rights Amendment. Men lost their minds. Remember how I've been asking when Batman became such a misogynist? This episode answers that question. He's written by guys who are afraid of strong women. Nora Clavicle is supposed to be a caricature of Gloria Steinem, but a caricature is supposed to be funny. She wasn't. Her crusade for women's superiority is supposed to be a send-up with the women's equality movement. But what ends up being a caricature is the mayor and all the other men of the city. These poor slobs are so helpless on their own, they'll starve in their own filth without a woman to look after them. That part just made me angry because Mayor Linseed is a weenie. She can get him to do anything just by refusing to cook because he's incapable of walking down to the corner and getting a sandwich. Or sitting down and talking and working things out in a compromise. Nope, he's the man of the house and what he says goes. At least until his shirt gets dirty or it's time for his supper. Then it's, yes dear, no dear. Even if it means the whole city gets blown up. At least Batman found a way to prevent that. And by the way, those were not simple candy store flutes. Those were special bat flutes capable of producing any frequency you need any time. And as we saw, it plays it right even when you don't. I need a guitar that can do that. I'm Irving and I'm an Adamaniac. Of course they're holding rolling pins. The rolling pin is a whooping... A whooping? Yeah, that's what a woman uses for whooping a man.